Hey, how's it going? And welcome back to another James E. Tech YouTube video. In today's video, I'll be going over 10 CCNA practice questions from techexam.pro, a free certification practice resource. And I'll be going over all 10 questions, explaining why each answer is incorrect or why each answer is right, and telling you guys some tips and tricks for the CCNA and why how to go about answering these types of questions. If you guys have any questions, Go ahead and feel free to comment them down below. TechExam.pro is a website that I made to help people get a free certification practice resource. I do plan on expanding the amount of questions we have in the future. We have about five certifications on the website. We have CompTIA+, Security+, Network+, the CCNA, and the CCST networking certifications. We will be adding many more here in the future, and I'll be adding many more questions. So the link to that is in the description down below, or you can search techexam.pro. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the practice questions. All right, so the first question we have here is refer to the exhibit. Which type of route does router one use to reach the network 10.20.30.128 26? So um, we get a uh, show IP route command output here. Um, we can go ahead and look at this in a bigger picture. Um, so we have two directly connected routes. That is the C's. And then we have a BGP route, which seems to be a default route because it is to any IP address that is not in this current list. And then we have two OSPF routes. So looking at these answers, we have directly connected. So we have two of those uh, static route. Um, we have zero actually, and then we have OSPF route, which we have two of those. And then we have default route, which would be the BGP route. So this question is pretty straightforward. It's giving us the exact network that it wants to go to, which is, um, the OSPF route but here. We can see the O with the network. It's not making us do administrative distance or most specific prefix because it is giving us the exact, um, network it wants to go to. So this is a pretty simple answer to uh, which is OSPF route because it is the exact network go to the next question after configuring the router as shown you attempt to access it through the console port but are not like but are not prompted for a password what is most with the most likely issue pull this up here so we have a command here I'll let you guys look at the command and look at the answers I'll give you a couple seconds now, generally, the console port is enabled by default because that's generally how you uh, first configure a router or switch is how you you uh, plug in the console port and then you go on a computer and then you get into the uh, router. So that is likely not the answer. Um, let's look at the command right here. So we have uh, we're going to the line VTY interface. We're putting in a password. We're putting login and we're exiting. Now, if you go back to the question, it's asking about accessing through the console port. These first four commands really don't matter in the context of this question. Now, when we go to the line console zero, uh, we put in a password and we exit. So not, now that this doesn't involve the line VTY lines, it cannot be the first answer, the third answer. Now let's address the last answer here, which is the password for the console lines incorrect. Now that definitely cannot be the answer is because um, you, are you are not prompted for a password. So since you weren't prompted for a password, there's no way that you got the password incorrect. That's a way of thinking of it. But I mean, if you really knew the command, you would know that if you go to line console zero, you put in the password Cisco one, two, three, you have to put log in after entering this command or else it will not work. No password will come up for the console configuration login. So that's pretty much how it works. So that is uh, what the right answer is. So let's go to the next question. What is the default action of a layer two switch upon receiving a frame with an unknown destination MAC address? The switch forwards the frame and records the destination MAC address in its MAC address table. The switch sends a copy of the frame to the CPU for destination MAC address learning. The switch floods the frame to all ports except the one that it was in, except the one that it was received on within the same VLAN, or the switch discards the received frame. So the first answer is incorrect because if it knew the destination MAC address, it would actually do this. If, but since it does not know the destination MAC address, it cannot forward the frame to the correct spot. The switch sends a copy of the frame to the CPU for destination MAC address learning. While it does learn MAC addresses, it does not know the destination MAC address. So that answer cannot be correct. 
The switch floods the frame to all ports except the one it was received on within the same VLAN. Now, this is the correct answer. Um, when it doesn't know the destination MAC address, it will flood that frame to, out of all of its ports saying which of you has this IP address. And then as soon as a device says, hey, that is me, it'll respond back saying where it is. And once the device that has the proper IP address, it will say, hey, that is me. And here's my MAC address. And then it will forward the frame to that MAC address after putting it on its table. Um, and then the switch discards the received frame. That is not correct because that would just drop the frame. So the third answer is the correct answer. Which IPv6 address range is used to send packets to multiple devices instead of a single device? And we have five different IP addresses here. I'll give you guys a few seconds to think of this. So let's break down the type of addresses we have here. Um, these are all different types of addresses and there is only one correct answer. So the first one we have here is a global unique address range. So um, that's like a public address. Um, this cannot be used for multicasting. Um, and then this FC00 um, is a unique local address, which also is not a multicast address. And then we have FE80, um, which is a link local address, which is a local, um, pretty much like a private IPv IPv4 address. And then we have FF00, which is a multicast address uh, range. And then we have the last one here, which is uh, all zeros, then a one at the end, which is a loopback address, which is not this, that can't go anywhere. But a loopback address is usually just to test the uh, functionality of the network interface. So the correct answer is this one right here. Which protocol provides reliable data transfer by establishing connection-oriented session between devices. We have ICMP, UDP, TCP, and ARP. So we're talking about data transfer here. So um, let's talk about the layers that these protocols are. ICMP is a layer three protocol. It is something to test connectivity between devices, um, usually from the ping command. And then we have UDP, which is a layer for transport layer. And then we have TCP, which is also a layer four protocol. And then we have ARP, which is a layer three and two protocol. I'm not sure if it's both or if it's just layer three, but pretty much what it does is it turns IP addresses into MAC addresses, which IP addresses are layer three and MAC addresses are layer two. Um, so when we're talking about data transfer, we're talking about the fourth layer of the uh, OSI model. So that cannot include ICMP or ARP. Now let's talk about the differences between UDP and TCP. UDP stands for user Dat datagram protocol. This is a connectionless protocol. Pretty much it is used for, let's say phone calls, streaming, something to where if a packet drops, it will keep going. It doesn't matter if it sends the complete message. If something drops, just keep going. Now TCP is a connection protocol where it goes through the three-way handshake to establish a connection. And then what it does is it will make sure that the full message gets sent when you're transferring data. So the correct answer would be TCP. All right, question seven. In a wireless 802.11 network, which frame type is used for both beacon frames and association responses? Management, control, data, or authentication? Now, management frames are used by wireless clients to find and connect the right Wi-Fi network. Um, so pretty much a beacon is where a access point will kind of advertise saying, hey, these are my networks. I have these networks. You can connect to them via Wi-Fi. Um, that is pretty much what beacons are. And then association responses, I believe, is when you connect to a Wi-Fi network. It uh, pretty much you connecting to the access point. Now, control frames assist in managing access to uh, wireless medium, but are not directly used for connection management. Um, so that it would definitely not be the control frame. Now, data frames are used to carry data. Now, these really aren't used for data. It's more for connecting to a network so it cannot be data frame either and lastly cannot be authentication frame because we are not talking about authentication so the correct answer must be management
Question eight, which two interface counters are likely to increment when a frame fails the frame check sequence on a switch port? Now, a good first answer here would be input errors. This counter increases when router receives corrupted frames at the physical layer. Input layer uh, input errors can be due to physical layer one issues, um, such as signal interference, damaged cables, or faulty hardware. Now, frame errors could relate to layer two issues, but we're talking about layer one issues here, so it cannot be frames and collisions um, deal with half du duplex, duplex networks, um, and those really aren't an indicator of a layer one issue. Then we have cycle redundancy check or CRC. CRC errors indicate that the received frame has failed the integrity check. CRC errors often result from uh, issues in physical connections, you know, poor signal quality or electrical interference. So that would also be another one for this question. And giants would not relate either. Now we have question nine. What command can configure an IPv6 address with an automatically generated suffix based on the MAC address of an interface? IPv6 address autoconfig, IPv6 uh, EUI-64, IPv6 address slack, and IPv6 address manual. All right, so the first answer we have here, which is IPv6 address autoconfig. Um, while that does automatically generate an IP address, that, is, that does use um, Slack, which is stateless address auto configuration. What it does is it will let the router essentially give it an address rather than generating one itself. So that answer cannot be correct. Now, IPv6, uh, IPv6 EUI64. Now, this command generates an interface identifier, which automatically uses the device's MAC address. So that is essentially what the question is asking. So that means that this one is the correct answer. Now we have the last question here, which is which IPv6 address type is used for a one-to-many communication and is often employed for delivering data to multiple destinations in a single transmission. We have broadcast, anycast, unicast, or multicast. So let's explain um, each answer. First of all, IPv6 actually does not have broadcast address. So the first answer cannot be correct. Now, anycast is where a single address is assigned to multiple interfaces. Um, this is generally where if um, you send something out, it's where wherever the first computer responds first. So that is not that is not delivering a packet to many destinations. That is just one destination, but it could be different endpoints. Now, a unicast, uh, uni means one. Uh, that essentially just means a one-to-one -one communication. Multicast has multi, which means that you are um, doing a one-to-many communication. Multicast is where you'll have a multicast address, which will then go to multiple endpoints. So that is multicast. And as you can see, we have a 100% because we scored them all right because we are very smart. Those are all of the questions I have for today's video. I do plan on doing more of these with more certification exams as I do add them on the website. This is the first video of many videos of this series. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it did ha does help you out with your CCNA exam. And I hope the website does help you out as well if you guys do use it. So once again, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you guys did enjoy this video. This is James E. Tech and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.